वेलकम टू टुडे इस क्लास आई एम डॉक्टर अमृत नास्ता अ बेरियाट्रिक सर्जन फ्रॉम मुंबई सो जस्ट गिव मी अ मिनट टू गेट स्टार्टेड फॉर ऑल दोज ऑफ यू हु आर ऑनलाइन प्लीज गिव मी अ थम्स अप इफ यू कैन हियर मी एंड इफ यू कैन सी माई स्लाइड्स आई हैव माई फोन यूर विथ मी सो वॉट एवर यू आर कॉमेंटिंग आई कैन रीड सो यू कैन आस्क यूर क्वेश्चन एंड गिव यूर आंसर्स ऑन द चैट बॉक्स all of you who are online please give me a wave if i am loud and clear if you can see my page if you can see the slides let me know you are with me nivedita ram mohan bharti velan hi good evening to you all just give me a minute let people join in hi neeti so i'll begin this class soon we are going to be discussing an extremely extremely important topic that is pancreatitis some basics some advances some recent things some things that you must know some things which are good to know but nonetheless this is an extremely important topic for all entrance exams for all university exams whether it's surgery whether it's medicine pediatrics do you need to know pancreatitis in and out year after year you can expect two to three questions at least to come from pancreatitis as an mcq all right so while people are joining in let me tell you a little bit about myself i am dr amrit nasta and i am a bariatric surgeon from mumbai i teach on the plus platform at an academy you can use my code dr amrit dash yt if you wish to subscribe and hear me and a lot of other educators on the plus platform so you can use my code and you can join me on the platform these are my upcoming plus courses this course is ongoing hepatobiliary and bariatric surgery it's an aims pattern course and the next course will be a super specialty course and a recent advances course you can see all the topics that are going to be covered comprehensively on the platform in all of these courses Also an academy has started an FMGE course this is for foreign medical graduates who have the entrance exams so you can buy a 3 month subscription and again you can use my code all right so a lot of you are online as always this will be a two way class i expect you to interact answer questions please be confident all right i will try to cover as many important topics as briefly as possible and give you a few tips on the important points in acute pancreatitis all right so a lot of you are online let's begin today's class this is the first question please don't jump to the answer all questions have a little trick in them all right so this is the first one identify the incorrect statement about acute pancreatitis incorrect statement is it completely reversible inflammatory process the most common etiology is cbd stones hyperparathyroidism leads to recurrent attacks all anti diabetic drugs may cause acute pancreatitis there are some new things in this also so okay guys go ahead shoot let me see what you guys think about this don't jump to the answer dilpreet says completely reversible incorrect i am asking the incorrect statement guys think it over it's a basic today's class is basic to advance i hope you guys don't crumble on the basics otherwise there is no point in going to advances some are saying a some are saying b what about the others meksha sahaj heman neeti okay study mbbs europe mayo md says d mitali also says d for all of you who are saying d what should be the correct statement for all of you who are saying d what should be the correct statement anyone can answer this now people now i feel people are just following the leader one person is saying d and then they are just following please use your own brains don't fall for the traps bharti saying d now 
most common etiology is CBD stones. Okay. Let us take each statement by merit. Again, divided class. So let's take each statement by merit. <clears throat> Nobody said C. Hyperparathyroidism leads to recurrent attacks. Yes, this is correct. Hyperparathyroidism leads to hypercalcemia. And hypercalcemia leads to recurrent acute pancreatitis. This is correct. So this statement is correct. Most common etiology is CBD stones. Abs this statement is absolutely correct. Whether I say CBD stones or gallstones, it's the same. Alright. A gallstone only will go in the CBD. And that will go and block the ampulla. And that will cause acute pancreatitis. So this statement again is correct. So just because I twisted gallstones to CBD stone doesn't change. It still remains the same. So the main point of contention is, is it completely reversible? Or are all anti-diabetic drugs may cause? Remember, the main difference between acute and chronic pancreatitis, the main difference between acute and chronic pancreatitis is reversibility. And I will give you a rule of the thumb. In medicine, there are a lot of diseases which have acute and chronic forms. For example, acute renal failure, chronic renal failure. Acute pancreatitis, chronic pancreatitis. Acute heart failure, chronic heart failure. Remember the rule of the thumb. There is only one differentiation and that is reversibility. The only differentiation between acute and chronic medical illnesses is reversibility. So yes, acute pancreatitis, the inflammatory process is completely reversible. There is a little note that you need to know which I will tell you later about this complete reversibility. But for now, accept that acute is reversible. So the correct answer is all anti-diabetic drugs may cause. It can never be all. It has to be some, if any. So anybody can tell me which anti-diabetic drugs cause acute pancreatitis. This is the advance. This is what you need to know. This has not been asked. Which anti-diabetic drugs are known to cause acute pancreatitis? They are relatively new. They have come maybe in the last 15 years. They have not come before that. When I was in MBBS, they had just come into Harrison. Some have come in the last decade. Which are these drugs <clears throat> which are known to cause acute pancreatitis? 30 people are online. I am sure one, one person has read this in medicine. DPP-4 inhibitor. DPP-4 inhibitor is incorrect, Neeti. <clears throat> it's not the cetagliptin, vildagliptin, unfortunately. The answer is GLP-1 analogs. GLP-1 analogs are known to cause acute pancreatitis. Not TZDs either. I am surprised none of you gave the correct answer on this. I thought your medicine was stronger than mine. GLP-1 analogs. The commonly used drug is liraglutide. Exenatide liraglutide. You can't make a mess in OHAs guys. Liraglutide by the way is not orally. It is a subcutaneously given OHA. So about acute pancreatitis, it is reversible, more importantly it is temporary and the differentiation is no change in architecture of the pancreas. In chronic pancreatitis, you get a permanent change in the architecture. So you get things like calcification, you get things like duct dilatation, you get things like calculi. In the pancreatic ducts all these are seen in chronic and obviously they are permanent none of these things are seen in acute now according to Bailey and love something you must know most common cause of acute pancreatitis is biliary pancreatitis so whether it is gallstones or CBD stones it is biliary pancreatitis almost 70% the second most common is alcohol binge in India, it is alcohol. But this will never be the question. The question will always be most common cause overall. So the answer will be biliary. However, alcohol is the most common cause of chronic pancreatitis. 
So you are getting two MCQs here. Acute pancreatitis, biliary, chronic pancreatitis, alcohol. And other thing that you need to know is alcoholism is in two forms. One is people who do binge drinking and one is people who do chronic alcohol consumption. So pancreatic diseases are more common in binge drinkers. Can you tell me which diseases are more common in chronic drinkers? Anyone? Which pathologies are more common in chronic drinkers? This is how you correlate medicine in one way or another. Anybody? Chronic alcoholics have what pathologies commonly? Anyone? So chronic alcoholics have liver diseases. Cirrhosis. Excellent. So remember this rule. This is how you correlate when you study binge drinkers, pancreas, chronic drinkers, cirrhosis. Another thing is recurrent pancreatitis. Now if a person gets repeated attacks, then you and obviously if he is non-alcoholic, you will suspect some metabolic problem. So you should check his serum parathormones, his serum calcium, his lipid profile. These are the common metabolic problems or it could be an autoimmune pancreatitis which is not so common or it could be an anatomical problem. One of the common anatomical problems is pancreas divism. Pancreas divism. Between drugs, practically any drug can cause acute pancreatitis but the important ones are steroids, high azide diuretics and antiretroviral drugs. These are the drugs you need to know because they are used rampantly and they have been proven to cause acute pancreatitis. Alright, I hope I am clear. Some basics, some advances, but a lot of stuff you need to know in pancreatitis. Okay, this is one easy question. I hope everyone gets this right. Identify this clinical sign which is seen in acute pancreatitis. Is it Cullen, Grace Turner, Fox or Cruvelier Baumgarten? I expect 100% of you to get this right. These are the kind of image based questions they ask you which is expected that you get correct. So if you don't get this correct, you will not get a good rank. Let alone an average rank, you will get a bad rank. So this is bruising or ecchymosis around the umbilicus. So it is para umbilical bruising. This is Cullen sign. Anybody can tell me when do you get Cullen sign and acute pancreatitis? Do you get it in all cases or it is symbolic of something in pancreatitis? When is Cullen sign seen? What is the reason that he gets para umbilical bruising though the pancreas are somewhere in the retroperitoneum at the back? Why should he get para umbilical bruising? So excellent, a lot of you guys are saying correctly. Cullen sign, even Gray Turner and Fox, they are all features of retroperitoneal hemorrhage. They are all features of retroperitoneal hemorrhage, not hemoperitoneum, retroperitoneal hemorrhage. So not only in acute pancreatitis, they can get in, you can get them in retroperitoneal bleeding also. So if the person had an abdominal trauma where he had an IVC injury and he had a hematoma in the retroperitoneum, he may also get these signs. Alright, so Cullen's is paramilical, Gray Turner is flank bruising. What is Fox? Anybody? What is Fox sign? And where do you get Cruvelier Baumgarten sign? So, two questions to you straight away MCQs. Where do you get Fox's sign? And when do you get Cruvelier Baumgarten sign? What is this Cruvelier Baumgarten sign? Yes, Fox's sign is bruising in the inguinal region. Absolutely right. What is Cruvelier Baumgarten? Liver cirrhosis. No, it, it's a very specific question. It has a specific answer, Bharti. Where do you get Cruvelier Baumgarten sign? Anybody? You have to correlate. When I put the options, I put options to confuse you. Alright, when I am framing an MCQ, I have to put really close options so that each option seems familiar. So, Cruvelier-Baumgarten sign is the 
venous hum no it's not urethral injection it's not skin mats it is venous hum that you see when the person has caput medusae caput medusae are para umbilical veins that you get in portal hypertension they are para umbilical veins that you get in portal hypertension so cruvelier baumgarten is a venous hum that you see in portal hypertension all right remember this cruvelier baumgarten now what is happening in acute pancreatitis the main problem is in acute nodes not umbilical nodes either those are system mary joseph nodes shubham please can't make mistakes in these things <clears throat> now coming back what happens in acute pancreatitis basically there are any of these etiologies which cause an insult to pancreas so there is an insult to pancreas because of which the pancreas starts releasing its strong enzymes so all those enzymes the trypsin chymotrypsin all those enzymes start getting released by the pancreas and they start digesting the pancreas so basically pancreatitis is not just an inflammation it is a digestion of the pancreas by its own enzymes now these enzymes are not restricted only to the pancreas initially they will cause pancreatic inflammation then as the pancreatic digestion increases and worsens they start leaking around the pancreas they start leaking around the pancreas and then later they enter the systemic circulation yes parthiban that is sirs so understand the first phenomena that pancreatitis is not a disease of the pancreas it is a disease of the pancreas which will spread throughout the body depending on the severity it will spread throughout the body it will start in the pancreas then it will go around the pancreas to the organs in the vicinity and then it will spread in the systemic circulation to distinct organs all right two distinct organs think of pancreatitis like this pictureize what is pancreatitis like this so it is starting in the pancreas but spreading distally so the important symptoms severe epigastric pain radiating to back which is relieved on bending forwards typically after an alcoholic binge so that's the case they will give you 40 year old male alcoholic after binge drinking comes to the casualty vomiting epigastric pain on examination abdomen is tender what is the next step so the next step would be keeping in mind acute pancreatitis as you know it can mimic other gi conditions also biliary colic behave similarly perforation behave similarly so it can present in different ways also it can present by virtue of its complications which we will discuss later all right so that was about the symptomatology of pancreatitis this is perhaps one of the important mcqs discussing one of the local complications that is pseudocyst so for a pseudocyst formation the inflammatory fluid should persist for a minimum of one week two week four week six weeks this perhaps is the most important mcq of today the inflammatory fluid should persist for one week two weeks four weeks six weeks some people are saying four some people are saying six this is not a question you can get wrong guys extremely important pseudocyst formation the inflammatory fluid should persist for four or six or two or one okay a lot of you have answered correctly the answer is 4 weeks i have taken a class on timelines in surgery where i have discussed all the important timelines of surgical diseases at what period is what disease classified or 
demonstrated please go through that class too you will get all these kind of questions which are period based anyways now coming to pseudo cyst formation look at this slide each and every word is important in this slide this slide discusses the local complications of acute pancreatitis and this is given by the atlanta classification of 2012 if you read the older books no it is on the unacademy pla unacademy platform it's a free class anybody can view it it's not a paid class so this describe this described the modified atlanta classification described the local complications if you read the earlier books they gave a lot of things like necrosis pancreatic abscess pancreatic ascites a lot of complicated definitions this classification defined the local complications into two groups only now understand when the pancreas gets inflamed when the pancreas gets inflamed there are two things that can happen one is it is just an inflammation which is called as edematous pancreatitis or if the inflammation is very severe it can lead to death of some amount of pancreas that is called as necrosis of pancreas so basically pancreatitis is of two types pathologically edematous pancreatitis and necrotic pancreatitis for necrotic pancreatitis there should be some amount of death of pancreatic tissue or necrosis of pancreatic tissue this happens only in some kinds or some variants of acute pancreatitis it does not happen all the time so based on these premises they discuss the local complications so i told you the disease begins in the pancreas and then spreads peri pancreatically now what is this peri pancreatic spread this inflammatory fluid from the pancreas now starts going in front remember the pancreas lie in front of the vertebra at the retroperitoneum there is a space in front of the pancreas called the lesser sac it is the space behind the stomach behind the stomach in front of the pancreas so this inflammatory fluid from the pancreas starts going in front this inflammatory fluid is a myelase rich fluid obviously so this amylase rich fluid which is getting formed in front of the pancreas is called as acute fluid collection so if i do a ct scan in a person with acute pancreatitis in the early few weeks he may have he may have fluid in front of the pancreas this fluid is called acute fluid collection and it is an amylase rich fluid if this fluid persists for more than 4 weeks it starts becoming organized a wall starts getting formed around it which is formed by granulation tissue this is called as an acute pseudocyst so what is a pseudocyst a pseudocyst is a fluid collection around the pancreas which persists which persists beyond 4 weeks remember this definition after today you should have no confusion in picturing or understanding what is a pseudocyst it is called pseudo because it does not have a normal wall the wall is lined by granulation and the important thing is this fluid should persist for more than 4 weeks only then can you call it a pseudo cyst and the most common side obviously is going to be the lesser sac lesser sac is the space just in front of the pancreas that is the first space where the fluid will leak if this fluid is also having some necrotic material because the person had necrosis of pancreas so if there is also some necrotic material in this fluid it is called as acute necrotic collection so acute fluid collection versus acute necrotic collection only difference is here there is a presence of necrosis 
if this necrosum persists beyond four weeks same duration if this necrosum persists beyond four weeks it is called as wall of pancreatic necrosis so local complications are only four acute fluid collection acute pseudocyst acute necrotic collection and wall of pancreatic necrosis all are defined by a period they are all timeline based of four weeks all right so these are the only four local complications that you need to know for acute pancreatitis however the these pancreatic enzymes need not be limited to the lesser sac from the lesser sac they can enter the peritoneal cavity so the person can get pancreatic ascites again this ascitic fluid will be amylase rich the enzymes can cause inflammation of the pleura he will have pleural effusion again amylase rich if the enzymes come in front they go into the peritoneal cavity they can cause perforation of the bowel they are very strong enzymes they can perforate the bowel and the most common bowel perforation is transverse colon they can erode the vessels around the pancreas so the person can get pseudo aneurysm or the person can get venous thrombosis what i simply want you to understand is everything is happening because of leakage of the enzymes the more the enzymes leak the more local complications the more loco regional complications the more systemic complications everything is pertaining to the leakage of enzymes which set up an inflammatory cascade all right i hope i am clear on this your perspective on acute pancreatitis should be like this that it is not a local disease it is a systemic disease all right if you don't stop it at the pancreatic level itself it will spread throughout the body and that will make the person land up with more and more complications and increasing severity let's come to this one this is the most recent and the most one of the important mcqs we are discussing recent advances so most appropriate marker of severe acute pancreatitis most appropriate marker of severe acute pancreatitis crp more than 150 necrosis more than 70% on ct renal failure more than 48 hours lipase more than 3000 which is 10 times normal all right two people have said a one person has said b come on guys and i am not saying this has never been asked this has been asked in different ways i am trying to fool you sahaj has said b bharti has said a all right i have gotten some people saying a some saying b some saying d nobody for c renal failure <clears throat> everyone is saying serum lipase more than 3000 or necrosis more than 70% i am saying most appropriate marker so the class is divided between a b and d nobody for c nobody for renal failure meksha neeti no at least give it a go guys acute pancreatitis is not something you can fool with enzyme levels don't correlate okay half the crowd has said still said d all right unfortunately and i am really proud of myself none of you got this right the answer is renal failure more than 48 hours i hope you guys are feeling a sense of doom you should because this is a question which i expected at least 50% to get right it's not a very difficult question most appropriate marker no it's not bun it is renal failure persisting more than 48 hours i will discuss this in detail to make your life easy now when a person comes with a history of epigastric pain after alcoholic binge and you are suspecting acute pancreatitis you can either do amylase the thing with amylase is it has an early rise and an early fall 
but it has a lot of false positivity also. A lot of diseases can mimic falsely elevated serum amylase. So it is not specific. The blood investigation of choice is always going to be lipase. So if I have to do one investigation, I will do lipase. It is sensitive and specific, but it is not going to correlate with severity, which means if the normal lipase level is 300, if the one person has 600 and one person has 6000, I cannot say that the one who has 6000 has a more severe form. It's not like that. Enzyme levels don't correlate with severity. They only have some specificity in diagnosis, but don't correlate with severity. There are a lot of radiological signs described on X-ray, which you can read. Important radiological imaging of choice is always going to be CCT. This is the investigation of choice. But the problem is CCT should not be done immediately. There is a timeline described which is called as the ideal time to do CT scan. What is that? When should you do a CT scan? This is again extremely important. This is a, again a virgin MCQ which you must know. Ideal time for doing CT scan after acute pancreatitis. Anyone? This again I have taken in my timeline class. Again something that you must know. The ideal time is yes after 72 hours of symptoms. Excellent guys. After 72 hours of symptoms. Which means if I want to get severity of acute pancreatitis on CT scan, I have to wait for 72 hours of symptoms. So CT scan takes too much time. CRP again 48 hours after symptoms. And again they are not ideal. This does not correlate either. Renal failure. What is this renal failure? What has renal failure got to do with severity? Look at this slide. This again is given in the Atlanta classification of acute pancreatitis where they have defined severity. There are millions of severity scores for acute pancreatitis. You must have read Glasgow, Glasgow score, Ranson score, Apache 2 and so on. There are hundreds of scores. But the most appropriate, the most significant, the most accepted is always going to be the modified Atlanta staging. It describes acute pancreatitis into mild, moderate and severe. Mind you, this is given in Balian Love. Even though I am saying this is recent, this is 2012. Balian Love has given all of this. It was not there in my time, but it is there now. It simply says mild acute pancreatitis should have no complications locally. So no pseudocyst, no necrosis and no systemic complications. Alright, so no local complications and no systemic complications. Yes, another is the SOFA. You can use SOFA. There are many many scores. Balthazar is CT score. They are all scores which use CT or some form of investigation. So there are a lot of scores but the one that is used is the Atlanta staging which describes mild as having no complications, moderate as having local complications with or without transient organ failure. If you remember I told you pancreatitis can have systemic effects. So I will label someone as having severe pancreatitis only if he has persistent organ failure. Persistent organ failure. So he can have acute renal failure, he can have ARDS, he can have congestive cardiac failure, anything. It should be persisting more than 48 hours to be labeled as severe acute pancreatitis. This perhaps is, so this modified Atlanta is what you need to know for acute pancreatitis by heart. Alright, now coming to management. This is not such a difficult MCQ, but this again is picked directly from Bailey and Love. 
प्लीज गेट दिस राइट आई होप यू गेट दिस राइट प्रिफर टेक्निक ऑफ फीडिंग इन सिवियर अक्यूट पेनक्रिक नेजोजल और पेग preferred technique of feeding in a patient with severe now you know what is severe severe acute pancreatitis 48 hours <clears throat> what is the preferred feeding technique sahaj rutvik are saying naso jejunal okay bharti saying a yash saying a pratiban saying a so lot of people are saying a or c nobody for b nobody for peg come on guys feeding nutrition i am telling you nutrition in surgery extremely important in all illnesses nivedita mithali are also saying a so basically you are saying a or c nobody saying nasogastric nobody saying peg oh, oh you guys are really really struggling in acute pancreatitis i must say the answer is nasogastric the answer is naso gastric first of all remember a rule of thumb in any severe illness i will always no it's not d also again still more wrong answers i will always always prefer i will always prefer enteral feeds so my preferred feeding will always be enteral in enteral my number 1 will always be oral if tolerated it will always be oral if tolerated if not oral then nasogastric nasojejunal can be used only if nasogastric is not tolerated all right and tpn will always be the last resort remember tpn will never be your answer all right so if in this there was an option of oral your answer would have been oral remember this don't make a mess in nutrition the preferred nutrition will always in it's a rule of thumb will always be enteral only if he is unconscious and has an intestinal pathology wherein enteral feeding is un- unsafe or impossible will you attempt a tpn all right so remember when the person comes i have to categorize him into mild or severe based on his symptoms doesn't enteric lead to enzymatic secretion no it doesn't the advantage of enteral nutrition are far more than giving him tpn if that is what your question is so even if the st- stimulation is a little bit still it's no harm the advantage of enteral is far more then giving him parenteral nutrition this is a rule of the thumb in critical care patients guys can't go wrong so when the person comes i investigate him categorize him into mild or severe if he is mild he doesn't need any antibiotics no antibiotics just painkillers only if he is severe organ failure then he will be in icu he will require oxygen may require endotracheal intubation iv fluids again early nutrition oral or naso gastric remember early nutrition that is the norm this is the last one again this is one of my favorite questions all are definitive what if perforation has occurred then you treat it like a perforation that has nothing to do with acute pancreatitis then you follow the perforation protocols one exception cannot change the treatment tpn for shock no why tpn for shock no tpn tpn only if unconscious critically ill and not able to sustain intestinal nutrition which basically having intestinal failure i have taken a class nishant on nutrition and surgery if you are on the plus platform please go through it all your doubts on nutrition will be gone come to this important this is my favorite mcq all are definitive indications for surgical intervention in acute pancreatitis except biliary pan ruptured pseudocyst necrosis showing air specs severe sterile necrosis first understand when we discuss the management we spoke about medical management severe icu care oral feeds enteral feeds 
antibiotics, IV fluids, oxygen. We never spoke about surgery. So I am saying in a very small subset of patients, there are some indications where surgery is required. Which are these indications? Bleary pan, ruptured pseudocyst, necrosis or severe, severe sterile necrosis. Most people have said D. Guys, please don't follow the others. Use your own head. All this is given in the books. And all this is in some way twisted by me to make your life a little difficult. I cannot keep giving you easy MCQs like Cullen sign. You have to use your brain somewhere. Most have said D. One Europe Mayo MD is saying B. That's an interesting name. Anyone for biliary pan, necrosis showing air specs? I'm talking about except, mind you. Except. Okay, so I've gotten B, C and D. All different, different answers. Important question. Remember this, this will come in your exam. <clears throat> So let's go each option at once by merit. Biliary pancreatitis, which means the person had gallstones, one of which went to the CVD, and that caused acute pancreatitis. This obviously is a treatable cause. It is a treatable cause. So if I do ERCP, remove the stone, and I do a lap coli, remove the gallbladder, this will be treatment. So when there is surgery which can treat, I will do treatment. So this obviously is an indication. Forget we come to see necrosis showing air specs. Anybody can tell me what this means? Anybody can tell me necrosis showing air specs. What does this mean? I have put it in a complicated way because this is how AIMS exams will put it. What does necrosis showing air specs mean? <clears throat> Anyone? And those of you who said severe sterile necrosis, let me tell you anything that is severe means it is not getting controlled conservatively. Means conservative management has failed. That's why it is severe. So if it is severe, conservative has failed, obviously you will do surgery. Necrosis showing air specs is not perforation. No, it's not pneumatosis intestinalis. Yash is right. It means that there is infection or infected necrosum. So the pancreatic necrosum, which was earlier sterile, has now gotten infected. Whereas the infection comes, no air has entered. No air has not entered. Organisms have entered, which are air forming, which is means infected necrosum which is the most definite indication for surgery because these patients will rapidly deteriorate and they will die so definitely you have to do surgery here if you had no clue if you had little common sense you would have said ruptured pseudocyst and the reason it reason is pseudocyst is in the lesser sac when it ruptures where will it rupture normally? It will normally rupture in the stomach. Right in front. Oh, you got it right by fluke. There is no fluke in surgery. If I ask you this question after 10 days, you will get it wrong. If it ruptures, it will rupture in the stomach. Because it's right in front. Rupturing into the stomach will treat the pseudocyst. The pseudocyst will go away forever. Only when it ruptures into the peritoneal cavity is it a problem. Alright, so a ruptured pseudocyst, if it ruptures into the stomach or the intestine, it gets cured or it gets drained. Alright, so remember important, most important, surgical intervention is required. If he has biliary pancreatitis, you will do ERCP early and early lap coli. Or you will do surgery. Here the surgery I am talking about is necrosectomy. So I will remove the necrosum. If he has infected necrosis, severe sterile necrosis, or if he has some complications like a transverse colon perforation, where the complication requires surgery. 
when I am doing surgery for the complication. All right, guys, a lot of important facts today. I hope your approach and your understanding of pancreatitis has changed a bit because this is an extremely crucial topic. There is no end to how much you can read, how much you can study. So go through what I've taught again if required. Sir, what if the treatment of pseudosis ruptures into peritoneum? If he is not having any severe symptoms, nothing. Otherwise, you drain the pseudosis. The treatment for all pseudosis is enteric drainage. Either a cystogastrostomy or a cystojejunostomy. Alright, so that is about pseudosis. So guys, please study acute pancreatitis as well. Study pancreas as well. 3 MCQs from pancreas 100% in every entrance exam what about other scores which scores must be done thoroughly if you ask me <clears throat> ransom score modified atlanta bicep there is a score called bicep and ct severity these four scores should be done thoroughly forget the others all right if you want to learn more please join me on the plus platform use my code you will get a good discount that's me you can use my code my ongoing course is the hepatobiliary course itself. My next class on Friday is on acute is on pancreatic disorders. I hope that you guys join me for that. Take care, keep studying. Do remember to give a thumbs up in the response at the end of the class. Take care guys, study safe and be, be safe guys.